This month is the supernatural. Yeah. And our key verse comes in Acts, the fifth chapter, the twelfth verse. You can just write it down. You don't have to, you don't have to go there because we're gonna go to Joshua, amen. And it says, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Yes. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Mm. Praise the Lord. We could preach on that all, the, all, all day long. We could spend the rest of our time talking about that, about being one accord. Yeah. About being one accord. See, when God wants to get ready to do something, he's going to use a man. Amen. He's going to use a woman. Amen. Somebody listen to me. Somebody hearing what I'm saying today. God is going to use an individual, a vessel who is ready to go, who is ready to do what thus saith the Lord. And so I'm excited that God has made a plan this month yes. that divinity is going to touch humanity. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody, Amen. That's a shout of word right there. The, the plan is that divinity will touch yes. humanity. Amen. And God will be glorified today. <laughs> he will be glorified this month. Thank you, Father. Amen. So again, this is a two-part of it. Let's read the first seven verses of Joshua 10. And it reads, Now it came to pass when Adonisic, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, yeah. and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. Verse 2. They, that they feared greatly because of Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities because it was greater than I and all the men thereof were mighty. Verse 3, Wherefore Adonis and king of Jerusalem sent unto Holham king of Hebron and unto Piram king of Jeru and to Japhai king of Lachish and to Deber king of Eglon saying, so he has now joined Four kings now to make five mm. and lead together. Just want to make sure that's clear. Verse 4 Come up unto me and help me that we may smite Gibeon. Yeah. For it hath made peace with Joshua and with children and with the children of Israel. Then for the five kings of, of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jer Jermuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon gathered themselves together. And went up and they and all their host, that means their armies, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. My God. Pay attention here. Verse 6. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to, to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slap not thy hand. <laughs> my Lord. Don't be slowful from thy servants. Come up unto us quickly and save us and help us from all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. Sorry, these next two verses as well. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thy hand. Come on now. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. That's where we're going to stop. Let me read that verse, verse again. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thy hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Thank God. I want to use for our subject for today and presumably for next week as well. So the Lord let us see it. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Help is on the way. More importantly, supernatural help is on the way. <laughs> I, 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 I grew up in the old Baptist church, and so a lot of times they used to say things like, I can't get no help in here. <laughs> or oh, some people would say, help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's a decree and a, 
a declaration in which I am familiar with. But a lot of times we were struggling, we were struggling to know where our help came from. We were, we were both confessing that we needed God, and, and yet we were still asking for an appeal from men. My God. We were hoping that a man would agree with us. We were hoping that a woman would say amen. We were hoping that a mother in the church would, a lot of times in, in the old church, if a mother was saying amen, that you felt like someone right. You weren't quite, your message wasn't quite in the same way that it was supposed to. Men, men have this tendency of being in their emotions. People have this tendency yes. of, 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 of swelling and filling with pride moments after they have been, moments after they have been endowed with blessing, Amen. endowed with courage, yes. endowed with endowed with, a, with, 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 with with an understanding. All of a sudden we forget that the wisdom came from God. Mm -hmm. That the help that you were asking for actually Amen. came from God. But Joshua was no fool. Joshua was not unwise as to where his help was going to come from. I love studying the, 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 the I love studying Joshua because Joshua had a Joshua had a unique understanding about God. And, and, and I can I can point to a lot of different part, parts of his leadership, but let me just point out four things in particular. Number one, his leadership was hallmarked by obedience and faithfulness. Yeah. We hear in we hear in his story, in his origin story, that when that, that when Joshua was sent out with Caleb to go and, 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 and seek after seek after and spy on the men in Canaan that he was supposed to go up against, that that of these men that came, and then I believe it was approximately eight of them, when they went and spied on them, all of the men came back and said, They're too That's big, too big. They're, 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 there's, there's too many of them. Uh, uh, um, see, see, that's not even what God asked them to report on. That's not. Absolutely. He just said, how many of them is? That's all. Just go back and report what you see. See, this is why. This is why we must have eyes on God. Mm. Because it will tailor how we report what's going on in our life. My God. Joshua and Caleb were distinctly different than their other fellow spies because these men reported with their eyes and they reported with fear. My God. Yeah, because that's what they saw. But God had talked to Joshua and he had told Joshua in the first chapter of Joshua, we hear that, he, that God says unto Joshua, he says, he says that I want you to be strong and be very courageous. Yeah. I'm going to give you success everywhere that you go. There you go. See, that was a word for him that, that was not attached to a picture. My he God. had to develop the picture for himself. My God. And so he said, okay, God, and what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to be strong. I want you to be very courageous. And this is what you're going to do. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. My God. But you shall meditate in it day and night. Come on, somebody get the scripture in your hand. I know, I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the word. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking from my own self. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and you shall be careful mm. to do everything in which I have commanded to you to this day. Yeah. And then shall you make your way prosper. Oh my God, come on now. And then you shall have good success. Somebody say, I shall have, I shall have good, success. good success. What did he say before that? He said, he said then, then you, you shall make your God. way prosperous. My God. He was giving them the blueprint, the plan. And so he was not only hallmarked by obedience and faithfulness, um, but he also was empowered by purpose and vision. And so everywhere that he went, he moved according to the vision and the purpose that he had already been prescribed to him. Mm -hmm. He never moved outside of the vision. That he didn't use the map that they gave him to know about the, about the land. They had not surveyed this land. They had My no God. idea what was in Canaan. Amen. He needed a heavenly map. He needed a yes. spiritual guide. He yes. needed a spiritual purpose from on high because the purpose that the people gave him wasn't going to be enough to keep them. 